Hey guys, Pete here. Today I'm going to explain the ending of Lovecraft Country Season 1, Episode 2. To do that, I'm going to rely heavily on the book of the same name that the show is based on. There was a lot of information crammed into the second episode, which was titled Whitey's on the Moon. And based on the reactions I've seen, it was confusing for some viewers. Having read the book, I didn't really have trouble following along with what was happening, but there were some big changes between the book and show that got me thinking. So I thought doing an explainer video to fill in some details from the book book while looking at the changes that were made would be the best video to make this week. As far as spoilers, this video will discuss everything that happened in the first two episodes and the book up until that same point. I won't spoil the ending of the story or any of the major plot stuff that happens after the trip to Artem to rescue Montrose. Episode 2 picks up right where Episode 1 left off. Tick, Letty, and George made it to Artem in one piece, and we learn that this giant estate they arrived at is owned by the Braithwaite family. We meet two members of the family, Samuel and his daughter Christina. We also learn that the Braithwaites are tied to a secret society, and that Atticus is a distant relative of theirs through one of his mother's ancestors named Hannah. William, the mysterious manservant of the house, explains the history of it all like this. A distant cousin of Samuel's, Titus Braithwaite, built the original estate, which burned down during the autumnal equinox of 1833. The fire killed Titus and everyone inside except for one of his slaves. That slave turned out to be Hannah, who was pregnant with his child, and that's how Tick ended up being a direct descendant of the Braithwaites. This is largely the same as what's in the book, but things play out differently in the show. The main difference being that Tick already knows about Hannah in the book rather than George playing a key role in figuring out what's going on. From there we get a lot of changes. Christina is actually gender swapped. In the book, her character is Samuel's son, who's named Caleb. This changes the tension she has with her father, but beyond that it doesn't make a big difference at this point. And the character seems like it works pretty well with Abby Lee in the role, so I think it's fine. Her father is the current leader of a sect of the Order of the Ancient Dawn. This name is slightly different as it includes the word Adamite in it. The Adamite Order of the Ancient Dawn. The Adamites were a real group of early Christians you can look up if you want to, but I think the explanation Samuel gave to Atticus is all you need to know. He wants to return to paradise, or regain the primeval innocence of man, and in the process, achieve immortality. This was the same thing Titus was trying to do when he burned down the original lodge. Titus used spells from the Book of Names to make his body more powerful. Since Tick is his last remaining blood heir, he's a reservoir of that power. Samuel thinks he can step into the Garden of Eden and achieve immortality using that power as part of his spell. As far as the other men we see at the dinner, George explains that the Order of the Ancient Dawn has lodges all across the country. The Braithwaite's Lodge is called the Sons of Adam, and Samuel has basically called in all the other leaders of all the other lodges to be there to witness this ceremony. Christina's remark that her father's associates would never fraternize with the clan because they're too poor gives you an idea of how rich and powerful the members of this order are. They're able to cast spells, which we see several examples of in the episode, and naturally they believe they are superior to normal people. This extends to white supremacy, as George mentioned, they don't accept non-whites into the order as well. The ceremony and the lead up to it is different in the show, and to be honest, I'm not sure it's entirely clear what happened. Christina mentions the language of Adam, and her father uses it during the ceremony to cast his spell. In the book, Tick is told that he's going to have to speak the language of Adam, even though he's never heard it. Samuel explains that everyone knows it, we just don't remember that we do. Once things get started, it does come to him, and as he starts to speak it, he starts to understand what's happening. He realizes that he will stop existing as he is once he's done his part in the ritual. Basically that they want to use his power and it will use it up and he'll just sort of transfer over into oblivion. This isn't something he's interested in doing and the twist is that he received a note with writing in the language of Adam on it earlier in the day that said to read it once he could. He does that, and in the process, he's protected from the light that kills everyone else in the room and turns them to ash. More or less what we saw happen on the show, only it's not clear how or why he was protected there. 
What we see in the show is that Samuel is speaking the language of Adam and things seem to be working until something happens with Tick's ring. Christina gave him that, so she may have put a spell on it. And this would make sense since the note with the language of Adam he got in the book came from Samuel's son. It's not clear though. And to make things more confusing, he sees a pregnant Hannah in the portal after it opens up, which didn't happen in the book either. Does that mean her presence somehow protected Tick? I just don't know. She does also lead him out of the collapsing house though, so at the very least she was there for that. It should be noted that she's carrying a book with her as she goes, and this is most likely the Book of Names, which was mentioned a few times in the episode. So to recap the differences, in the book, Atticus makes a decision to save himself by reading some words during the ceremony that were given to him by Samuel Braithwaite's son. There's no ticking clock situation because George and Letty hadn't been shot, and Hannah doesn't appear during the ceremony. In the show, Tick is less of an active participant. As Samuel is opening the door to the Garden of Eden, the ring that Christina gave him seems to protect him while the sons of Adam are killed. Hannah appears to him and he follows her to safety as the lodge collapses. Outside, he learns that Uncle George died, which is the biggest change from the book. This is actually a real head scratcher because without giving away any details, George plays an important role with things later in the book. It's also weird that the show decided to add the possibility that George might be Tick's biological father. Since none of this is in the book, we can only speculate, but my guess is that the show is going to use that connection to bring George back. I mean, I do think he's dead. I think a resurrection would feel cheap with the way things were left, but a ghost version of his uncle getting involved wouldn't surprise me at all. And that's the overview of what happened. Tick's blood relation to Titus Braithwaite was what set things in motion. His distant cousin Samuel Braithwaite wanted to use him and his blood to achieve immortality. They imprisoned Montrose to lure Tick to Artem, and he brought his uncle George and his childhood friend Letty into it. In the end, things didn't work out for Samuel, who died alongside the other sons of Adam at the ceremony. But the Order of the Ancient Dawn still has other lodges throughout the country. His daughter Christina also survived, and she may have played a role in the ceremony going wrong. Tick, Letty, and Montrose will be able to leave Artem to return to Chicago, but sadly Uncle George didn't survive. It might seem strange to have all this happen so early in the season, but for what it's worth, this is the way the book is set up as well. The book is put together like a collection of stories that are all different but connected, and this trip to Artem is just the first one. The show added a couple of other things that weren't in the book. Christina helping to deliver the baby Shoggoth is something that only happens in the show. I imagine this is just to make sure you realize that she's not opposed to magic or the things that her father is involved in necessarily. But on the show, at least, she's more focused on the fact that she's excluded from this because she's female. Also, the spell where Tick, Letty, and George experience visions in their respective rooms while the Order watched on isn't from the book. If you think about it, these all touched on secrets that the characters kept and might just have been added to open a window in who they are and some of their fears. We've already talked about the connection between Dora and George. Letty's provided some depth with her fear of abandonment around what happened with her mother. It's interesting that things got intimate with Atticus, and I'm guessing that might hint that they're going to turn these two into a couple in the show. In the book, they were just friends and that was fine. But if the show followed that route, then Tick wouldn't play a major role in the story for a while. I do think it makes more sense to have him be more involved in Letty's story in the show. I didn't really love the way the main characters come and go from the different stories in the book. And I think TV viewers would probably feel the same way. Atticus's visit from the Korean soldier is also a bit of a mystery. It's the same actor who played the red alien in his dream from the first episode, and he also made a call to Korea in that. As far as how that relates to his character and what the others saw, well, we'll have to wait and see. And with that, I'll leave it there. Let me know in the comments what you thought about episode two, how this all came to an end. If you didn't read the book, did you find it confusing? If you did read the book, what do you think about some of these changes that they made? Losing Uncle George was a big surprise, and I don't believe they did that just for shock value, but we're entering into uncharted territory because like I said, he is important throughout the rest of the story. They could swap him out. That wouldn't be impossible, but I do really think that we'll see him be involved in one way 
or the other. As far as the episode itself, I didn't think it was as strong as the first one, but since I'm not doing a review, like a recap and review, I really won't get into it. I will say though that if you didn't enjoy it and you know, you're thinking about maybe not keeping up with the show, I would stick around for at least the next episode because it is going to change quite a bit if it follows along with how the book played out. So yeah, just let me know in the comments what you thought. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching guys. I'll talk to you soon.